Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, the 24th of November, and it's DB Cooper Day. And a big happy birthday to Steve Merchant, Billy Connolly, Pete Best, and Tom Adele. Wednesday saw bad news for fans of Braveheart as the Supreme Court dealt a blow to Scottish First Minister Nicola Sturgeon's plan for a so-called Indie Ref 2. It declared that a second vote on independence by the Scottish Parliament could only proceed with Westminster's permission. It was a unanimous decision announced by Justice Lord Reid. The Scottish Parliament does not have the power to legislate for a referendum on Scottish independence. Scotland's First Minister had planned for another referendum next October. Nicola Sturgeon says she's disappointed at the ruling and that the idea of the UK being a voluntary union is no longer a reality. Let's be absolutely blunt. A so-called partnership in which one partner is denied the right to choose a different future or even to ask itself the question cannot be described in any way as voluntary or even a partnership at all. Sturgeon later announced the SNP will use the next general election as a de facto referendum on Scottish independence, saying a special party conference will meet in the new year to make plans for a vote. The party's Westminster leader, Ian Blackford, says democracy is at stake and will not be denied. If Westminster keeps blocking our democratic decisions, lawfully and democratically, Scotland will find a way out of this union. Thousands of Royal Mail staff go on strike on Thursday and on Black Friday in the run-up to Christmas after a late pay offer was rejected. Members of the Communication Workers' Union turned down what their employer had described as a best and final deal, saying workers are facing an Armageddon moment. Unite Union members at 10 universities are also taking industrial action today, along with tens of thousands of staff at 150 institutions represented by the University and College Union. They're in dispute over pay, conditions and pensions. And there's a threat of even more disruption on the railways after the RMT union announced members will walk out for 48 hours on several dates next month and in January. Labour leader Sakir Starmer was doing a bit of strike maths at Prime Minister's question time. Twelve long years of Tory government, five Prime Ministers, seven Chancellors. Why do they always clobber working people? And General Secretary of the RMT Union, Mick Lynch, says they don't want to stage rail strikes before Christmas, but government inaction is leaving them no choice. Our members live in these communities. They're ordinary working men and women. They don't get paid when they're on strike, and they make a sacrifice in order to defend their terms and conditions. Across this economy, people have had their terms and conditions, included in this studio, ripped to pieces, and most workers in this country want to see a restoration of that job security uh, and decent terms and conditions. Power cuts have been reported across large parts of Ukraine following fresh Russian airstrikes on energy infrastructure there. Officials in Kyiv say three people have been killed and neighbouring Moldova is also experiencing blackouts. Meanwhile, Boris Johnson's been upsetting Germany with this claim that the country wanted Ukraine to quickly lose rather than have a lengthy war. I'll tell you a terrible thing. Uh, the German view was at one stage that if it were going to happen, which would be a disaster, then it were better for the whole thing to be over quickly and for Ukraine to, to fold. Berlin later dismissed the former PM's comments as utter nonsense. President Zelensky's told the UN the Russian strikes on power networks are crimes against humanity, and Ukrainian MP Kira Rudik told Sky News Kyiv's been experiencing power outages every day in different parts, and people are worried. The main thing that we feel right now is that we can only go through this winter together, that we will need to take care not only of ourselves, but of the people around us, and that the responsibility is to get every single Ukrainian through the winter. A 41-year-old from Surrey is to become the European Space Agency's first disabled astronaut. Paralympic sprinter John McFall lost his right leg in a motorbike accident when he was a teenager and has now been selected for training. He was one of over 22,000 people who applied. British astronomer Rosemary Coogan's also been named in the new cohort. No major Western space agency has ever put a para-astronaut in space, so it's a huge moment for John. I think that I can bring lots of things to the feasibility study, but I think in particular I can bring inspiration. You know, inspiration that science is for everyone, but inspiration that potentially space is for everyone. Still to come on the Smart 7, there's been another big upset at the World Cup and Kristen Bell learns the hard way that you can't trust your kids. Right after this. 
Welcome back. It was another day of surprises in the World Cup on Wednesday as four-time winners Germany suffered a shock 2-1 defeat against Japan in their tournament opener in Qatar. Spain avoided any slip-ups, kicking things off with a 7-0 thrashing of Costa Rica. Morocco and Croatia drew 0-0. The world's second-ranked team, Belgium, had to battle to beat Canada 1-0. Meanwhile, England goalkeeper Jordan Pickford put fears about Captain Harry Kane to rest. He had a scan on his ankle after picking up an injury in Monday's 6-2 victory over Iran, but still joined Wednesday's training session. Yeah, I think he's good. Um, probably be a little bit sore, but I think he's fine. He's out on the grass today with us, so that's good. And he's, a, he's our captain and I think he's fine, yeah. American actress Kristen Bell's possibly a little too honest with her kids. The Frozen star spoke to Jimmy Kimmel about a conversation they had recently about her doing hallucinogenic mushrooms, which backfired when one of them blabbed to her more conservative mum. Never a fun moment when your parents find out you've done a bit of drugs. And I wanted to try mushrooms for my 40th birthday, so my husband had gotten them for me, and I tried it. And we told our kids about it. And um, then I, I overheard my daughter talking to my mom, to grandma, going, Mom, I really wanted to try mushrooms. So, and I just walked by and I was like, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. The first trailers dropped for new Netflix heist series Kaleidoscope, which has eight episodes that can be watched in any order you fancy, and it'll all still make sense. It follows a bunch of thieves who attempt to break into a highly secure vault to get their hands on a huge $70 billion. British actor Rufus Sewell stars, which lands on streaming platforms in January, along with Breaking Bad's Giancarlo Esposito. We as human beings have a tendency to assume our brains are always looking to be one step ahead. Because of that, we start to think we know what someone's thinking or where they're going. This show breaks that convention and will help us to come back to the present and wait for the answer. This has been The Smart 7. Wherever you're listening, do us a favour and hit the follow button. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Have a great day. Written, produced and published by Daft Doris.